and we're going to be investigating the assumptions of the one-sample t-procedures. The one-sample t-procedures assume that we have a simple random sample from a normally distributed population, and here we're going to ask ourselves, if that normality assumption is violated, what are the consequences? So let's look at that normality assumption in a bit more detail. The good news is these t-procedures tend to actually work quite well under certain violations of the normality assumption, and we say the procedures are robust to certain violations of the normality assumption. But overall, they're not going to work as well if that normality assumption is violated, and sometimes they're going to work quite poorly. So if, we say, we were doing a confidence interval, and the assumptions were violated, then the true confidence level of that interval is going to be different from the stated confidence level. We might be saying it's a 95% interval, but it might only contain the true value of the population mean, let's say, 90% of the time, or something along those lines. And let's investigate that in a bit more detail. So, suppose we have these four distributions. And this one over here is simply a normal distribution. So if we're sampling from this distribution, the normality assumption is perfectly justified and the procedures will work perfectly. But let's look at three different violations. Over here we have a uniform distribution. And over here we have an exponential distribution which has some skewness to it. And over here we have a distribution that looks quite a bit like the normal, but it has heavier tails. So we've got three different violations of the normality assumption, and one situation in which the normality assumption is perfectly justified, and let's see what happens in a few different spots, and we're going to investigate this through simulation. So, the simulation is this. We're drawing 100,000 samples from each of these distributions, and we'll do this for different sample sizes. And for each of these samples, we're going to calculate a 95% interval. And then we're going to ask ourselves this question. What percentage of those intervals actually contain the parameter mu? And if that percentage is close to 95%, the procedures are working very well in that scenario. And if that percentage is quite different from 95%, then the procedure is not working very well in that scenario. So let's see how that pans out for those distributions that we looked at. Here, first of all, we've got this normally distributed population. So the normality assumption is perfectly justified. So theoretically, this procedure is going to work perfectly regardless of the sample size. So the true confidence level is actually 95% all the way, but it differs here. It says 95.1 here, but that's just due to sampling variability. There is some sampling variability or even when we draw 100,000 samples. Now, what about when that assumption is violated? So first, let's look over here at this uniform distribution. Now remember, this uniform distribution looks something like this. It's got shorter tails than the normal, normal distribution, a little truncated there. And when we have a sample size of 5, well, the true coverage probability is only around 93.5%. Now that's not too bad actually, and once we start getting up here into 20, sample sizes of 20 or 50 or that type of thing, we're actually very, very close to the 95%. So the sampling from the uniform distribution, even though the normality assumption is violated, the procedure works quite well, even for smallish sample sizes. Now what about over here when we look at an exponential distribution where we have some skewness? Well, the story's a little worse here. When we have a very small sample size of 5, our true coverage probability of our 95% interval is actually closer to 88%. So it's not working quite as well. But as our sample size gets bigger and bigger, this coverage probability is tending towards the 95%. Once we get up to 50 or so, well, we're up to 93 and a half. That's not so bad. Um, but for smaller sample sizes, we're going to be overstating the case if we actually say we have a 95% interval, because that's not really true. Now what happens if we look at a situation here where we've got a distribution that looks pretty close to the normal in a sense, it's just got heavier tails. Well, we're actually overstating our case a bit here. For a sample size of 5, we're going to be saying we have a 95% interval, but the true coverage probability is actually a little bit higher. And this effect though, similar to the others, is going to be going away as the sample size increases, we're going to be tending towards that 95%. So overall, when the normality assumption is violated, the true coverage probability of our 95% interval will actually be different from 95%. It might be quite a bit less than 95%, but as the sample size increases, it's going to be tending towards that 95%. So it's a very rough guideline. If we have a sample size of at least 40, these procedures work uh, fairly well in most situations. But if our sample size gets a little bit lower than that, the procedures might start to break down a bit. And especially if there's some skewness or outliers. The T procedures don't like skewness or outliers, so the procedures start to break down. Obviously, if we're closer to 40, uh, then they might not break down quite as much.
But if we start to get even smaller still, once we start to creep down less than 15 or so, well, now it's starting to get a little sketchy using those T procedures. And if we want to use them, we should be pretty confident that the normality assumption is reasonable before we go ahead and use them. Otherwise, we might really be reporting misleading results.